or the People's College Football Show, right? Like, live and die with every single fall Saturday. Wake up, Chick-fil-A breakfast, college game day, college football till 3 a.m. when Pac-12 After Dark ends. That's how we get down. Now, with that being said, people got to make their money back. Because every single Saturday, Vegas sits up there in their ivory tower. They peer down at us behind their screens. And they just take all our money from sports gambling. Every single Saturday, they just take it away. Not anymore. Not anymore. There's some win totals within the Big 12 Conference that we like a lot. And we're going to attack them. And we're going to show no mercy. So without further ado, Texas Tech. Seven and a half wins is the number that we are being given from Las Vegas. I've told you before, Zach Kitley, the OC at Texas Tech right now, Hogwarts grad. Had this offense scoring over 30 points a game last year. Tyler Shuck, if he's healthy, I think is the quarterback to run that offense. Zach Kitley also was at Western Kentucky. Remember Bailey Zappi? Remember all the records he set? I think they're in the progression to getting to be fully his offense. Taj Brooks now. He's led Texas Tech in rushing, I believe, the last two years, at least last season. He's a grown man running downhill with the football. Joey McGuire, to me, is like Ted Lasso from season one. Now, I don't claim season three Ted Lasso, but season one Ted Lasso, that's the kind of belief and energy and excitement he's created in Lubbock right now. You look at the schedule, too. They get Oregon at home. I'm just saying they they welcome Bo Nix to Lubbock. It's a long flight if you're coming from Oregon. They get Kansas State at home, defending Big 12 champions. They get TCU at home, another team that was in that Big 12 title game. They go at BYU. They go at Texas. But even still, I love over seven and a half wins. I'm taking it to the bank. You should too. Texas Tech and the Red Raiders, we're taking the over. Go ahead and lock it in. Seven and a half wins for the boys. Make sure you subscribe. We appreciate y'all in advance for that. Make sure you like the video. We appreciate you in advance for that. All right? We're not going to waste too much time here. We're going to go no huddle, no mercy. Just like Gus Malzahn and company at UCF. Now, Vegas is giving us six and a half wins as the number for the Knights. Now, you'll notice here, the money I think we're making is somewhere in the middle of these win totals. A lot of the seven and a half and six and a half win totals we like a lot. Now, UCF, let's take a look at the schedule. No Texas, no TCU. They don't count as wins, but you see that? You kind of grin sheepishly and you go about your day. I need a 3-0 start. I need wins over Kent State. Now you go to Boise State game two. I need that one. You should dig deep, boys. I need that one. And also I need Villanova. Okay, so 3-0 has to happen. I need a fourth win somewhere before the bye week. So I need one of either Kansas State, Baylor at Kansas. Take your pick. I'm not picky. You win one of those games. We got four wins heading into the bye week. Hey, we're cool, boys. Easy breezy. Cool, calm, and collected. Now I need three of these last six to get to seven. I need either West Virginia, Oklahoma State, Houston, all at home, by the way. Three of these last six at home, those would be the three to get. Also, maybe you get the win at Cincinnati. Bottom line, John Rice Plumley was fairly mid last year. No knock on John Rice Plumley. He'd probably tell you the same thing, fairly mid. But you look at Gus Malzahn and his development of quarterbacks and the offense itself, when it clicks for a guy, it clicks in a big way. I think John Rice Plumley and his ability going into year two for UCF pays da 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 dividends. And so we make cash money business. Take the over six and a half wins for UCF. We like seven or eight for the Knights. Their first year now in Big 12 play. Go ahead and lock that one up for us. Now, Kansas. The Jayhawks, right? Basketball school? No, 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 no. This is a football school. We've been saying it since... Game day was there last year. All right, this is a football school. Six and a half wins. Another six and a half win total from Vegas. This is tough. I love Lance Leipold. Absolutely love Lance Leipold as the head coach there. And Jalen Daniels, not to be confused with Jaden Daniels at LSU, Jalen Daniels is a program guy. Had that offense humming when he was playing quarterback for them. They had three wins in 2022 by one score. Gritty, gutted out performances. Now, even so, they bring back 80% of the defense. Say, Jody, that's a good thing, right? Mm, not when you allow 37 points a game. Not when you allow 37 points a game. No, it's, it's not a good thing. You get Illinois in your non-conference. I love Kansas. 
I love the direction of their program under Coach Hype, under Coach Leipold, rather. This hurts me. It hurts me to my core. You look at me right now when we're watching this, this whole thing live here on podcast. This kills me inside. We're taking under for Kansas on six and a half wins. I will say this, though. I do think they make a bowl game. So we like six more than seven, leaving us on the short end of six and a half wins. Under six and a half wins for the Kansas Jayhawks. Still a football school, though. Don't get it twisted. Still a football school. Now, the last win total we got to talk about, last time you saw them, they were playing in the national title game. And win the national title game, don't let that, you know, deter you from what we're about to talk about here with TCU. There is a lot of new pieces for this TCU team. The number is seven and a half wins. Max Duggan, gone. Quentin Johnston, gone. Kendra Miller, gone. A lot of really good players for this TCU team that made up the nucleus of the team that made a national title run, that beat Michigan, they're all gone. Garrett Riley, hate to break it to you, he's also cleaned out his locker. He's now the OC at Clemson. So you're saying, J.D., where are you going with this? you just building me up to tell, tell me that it's going to be under seven and a half wins? As Lee Corso would say, not, not so fast, my friend. Here's the deal. It's a lot of new for TCU, but it's not a lot of young. Like, a lot of these cats have been in the program for TCU. A lot of these cats, if they weren't in TCU's program, are coming over from other good college football teams. I mean, you see what they got from Alabama. Trey Sanders was a five-star recruit. Previously at Alabama, never quite found his rhythm there. Had some injuries. I think he is a diamond in the rough for them. That was a big pickup through the portal. Chandler Morris. I don't know why we all just forgot that Chandler Morris was the starting quarterback for this team going into last season. Only through his injury did Max Duggan get a chance to play. So that should tell you Sonny Dykes and company, they believe that Chandler Morris gives him a better chance to win games going into last year. And we all saw what Max Duggan did. He ended up being a Heisman Trophy finalist. So I'm not telling you that Chandler Morris is going to be better than Max Duggan, but I am telling you there's a lot of ability there that should encourage you. Now you look at this team, you got to bet on the system. You got to bet on the culture. It's cliche, but when it comes to the preseason win totals, we haven't seen a down of football from these teams just yet. The talent, I think, is better on this roster than people like to give credit. Last time we saw Chandler Morris play meaningful college football was against Baylor when he upset their chances of having a college football playoff run. Just went ballistic in that game. Bottom line, the magic at TCU, still there. For those of you listening on podcast, I'm tapping my, uh, my notepad here with my notes. The magic is still there at TCU. Magic hasn't graduated. We're taking TCU. We're taking over seven and a half wins for the Horn Frogs. Go ahead and lock that one in. To recap it, Texas Tech, seven and a half wins. Smooth over. A smooth over. We love Zach Kittley. We love Joy McGuire. We love the way that schedule shapes up. UCF, welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the Big 12. We're glad you're here. Six and a half wins. We'll take the over, too, and we'll keep on moving along. Kansas, the football school, Kansas, the Jayhawks. Love them with all my heart and soul. Felt like a part of me died here when I had to give them the under for six and a half wins. Not an exaggeration. TCU, seven and a half wins like the over. Magic, don't graduate. Go ahead and lock those in. Make yourself some money and pay for the Christmas presents for the kids early. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.